Good morning. It's good to see everyone here this morning. And uh, if you're a guest with us, we certainly appreciate you being here. And Mark and Amy and Faith are not guests, but they're here, so I won't. Uh, and, uh, but if you happen to be visiting with us, uh, we'd like for you to fill out a, uh, a visitor's card so that we can have a record of your visit. And the times of our worship service on the uh, screen behind me. And uh, we have these few announcements for the congregation. Lifetime screening will be here on October the 23rd. That's this week sometime. And also remember this is a very important date that on Wednesday, December the 2nd, we'll be uh, start back with our Bible classes. Uh, in our services this morning, uh, uh, at the appropriate time, Mark Littleton is going to lead our prayer for us. And Jay is leading the singing. And would remind you, if you've not picked up one of the bulletins, and that there are other announcements in there that may be of interest to you, there are plenty of those out on the table in the foyer. God is good. And all the time. Our first song, number 291, if you need your books. Let's stand while we sing together. I know whom I have believed in. <coughs>
As we pray this morning, there are several people that uh, we need to especially keep in mind. Uh, let's remember Melissa Beasley. This is Jesse Garner's sister. She is in Jackson Hospital in Montgomery on a ventilator and is not doing well. Uh, remember Melissa. Uh, Linda Gooden is in Mizell with diverticulitis. Uh, Roy Lawrence Jr. is in the hospital in Fort Walton. Uh, Danny Short has been diagnosed with COVID-19, but Danny is doing better, and uh, we're grateful for that. Uh, Will Hawkins is having uh, considerable pain in his feet, so please keep Will and Elaine in your prayers. And also, Carl Hollinghead will be seeing an orthopedic surgeon very soon uh, for his leg, so remember Carl in your prayers. Also, uh, we've been asked to please keep Carrie Allen. This is Chrissy Hughes' sister in your prayers. Uh, Carrie is pregnant and had a stroke on Saturday. Uh, they think that it was caused by a blood clot, and they're doing tests to find out more about that. Uh, Carrie is in southeast in Dothan and may be there a few days. So please keep Carrie Allen in your prayers. There are others who are listed in the bulletin. If you didn't get one when you came in, please pick one of those up. Also remember our shut-ins and those who have lost loved ones. Let's pray together. Father, as we approach you uh, this morning, we, we are grateful for your love. Father, we are, we are grateful for your grace. Father, we are so mindful of what Jesus has done so that we can approach you in prayer when we, when we have burdens, when we have people that we love, people that we care about. God, we know that you, you want us to come before you and you've enabled us to come before you because of Jesus and his sacrifice for us. Father, as we approach you today, we do pray for those that we've mentioned. We pray you be with uh, Melissa Beasley. We pray you be with Linda uh, and the diverticulitis that she's battling. We pray for Roy Lawrence and for Danny Short. We're grateful he's improving. God, continue to be with Danny. We pray for Will, that his feet issues would clear up soon, that his pain would lessen. We pray you be with Carl and... Uh, the orthopedic surgeon he will see soon. We pray that uh, he gets good news there. And, of course, we're mindful, God, this morning of Carrie Allen and the, the issues that she is having. God, we pray that she would be well. We pray that her little one would be well and that you would be with him during this time. God, as we worship you this morning, we are just, again, so grateful for what you have done for us. God, I pray that our, our songs and our prayers and our hearts would be filled today with your love and with gratitude for it. God, thank you for this church and this place. God, thank you for the light that they are to this community. God, I pray you continue to be with the shepherds here. Hold up their hands and strengthen them as they lead this, this church family. God, I pray you be with Trey and Vicki and their family as they labor here. God, strengthen him and continue to, to help him to, to keep his eyes squarely focused on you and to keep preaching your word. Father, continue to be with us as we worship today. May all that we do bring you honor and bring you glory. We pray it today in Jesus' name. Amen. Our song in preparation for the Lord's Supper, number 516, one day, 516. One day they left him a gallery mountain. One day they nailed him to the tree. Suffering anguish, despised and rejected. Bearing our sins, my Redeemer is he. Living he loved. 
time set aside to observe the Lord's Supper. Uh, this, is, uh, this was instituted by Jesus uh, right before his death, and we're commanded to do it on the first day of the week as a way of acknowledging his death, his sacrifice on the cross, and his taking on the sins of the world. Uh, and also the opportunity he gives us to experience abundant life in this life as well as eternal life with him after we, after we die. This is also a time that's been set aside for each of us to examine ourselves, to make sure we're living in accordance with his will and trying to keep our lives in order. So with these thoughts in mind, if you will, fill back your bread cover and we'll partake of the bread. If you'll bow with me, please. Father, we thank you for this bread which represents Jesus' body. We're thankful, Father, for the sacrifice he made for us while we were sinners. Uh, Father, we're thankful that he took on the sins of the world and gave us the opportunity to enjoy abundant life with you in this life as well as eternal life after we die. Uh, help us, Father, to uh, take this with these thoughts in mind. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We please bow as we offer thanks for the fruit of the vine. Father, we thank you for this fruit of the vine which represents Jesus' blood. And we're thankful, Father, that he shed his blood for us and for its saving power and, and saving grace. Uh, Father, help us to partake this today and examine ourselves and help us to walk worthily of you uh, throughout this week, looking always to Jesus as our, as our Lord, Savior, and guide. We pray in his name. Amen. We also have the opportunity to give back to the Lord as we've been prospered, and there is a box out in the foyer that you can put your contribution in. Well, the work of the church must continue, and I'll ask that you uh, pray with me at, at this time. Father, we thank you for the many blessings you've given us, the, the blessings of, of life itself, of, of your word that you've given us, that you hide in our hearts, uh, the opportunities we have, Father, to live for you and, and spread your gospel. And, Father, we just uh, thank you for these as well as the material things you've blessed us with and the freedoms we enjoy uh, at the hand of Christ and as citizens of this great country, which we pray you would continue to preserve, protect, and defend. Father, help us always to be grateful for these things and help us to realize that all these things are uh, gifts that you have seen fit to give to us as the Father of lights. And we acknowledge you for that. We pray that we never take these things for granted that will always be good stewards of thy bounty. We pray that you would bless this week's contribution and that it would be used in an effective manner to spread your kingdom. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. If you use your songbook, you may want to place your marker at 826. <clears throat> I'll be listening. It will be our song of encouragement. 826. Our song before the lesson 351. Let's stand while we sing together. Jesus is coming soon. <coughs>
Brother Mark's not with us today, but he is with us today. I believe he and Amy, uh, not Amy, I'm sorry, I'm putting, Mark is with us today. Trey is not with us today, but he is with us today. Uh, you get, uh, I believe he and uh, Vicki are probably worshiping with the Fort Payne Church this morning. But through the wonder of technology, uh, he was able to record his lesson. And so we are going to see Trey this morning. So if, if Ray's ready. Well, good morning, church family and friends. It is so good to be here with you this morning. Hope and pray that you're doing well. What a wonderful, wonderful song service we have had. Thank you, Jay, for the songs that you have led us in this morning. Thank you for being here as we worship God together in spirit and in truth. And for those who may be watching through Facebook Live as we stream, hope and pray that you are uh, doing well. Uh, hope and pray that you'll be able to be with us real soon together in God's house with God's people for worship. Uh, but until then, we are thankful for the avenue and the technology of Facebook Live and the ability to stream uh, over the internet and uh, to be able to be together to worship God in spirit and in truth. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and be turning there to Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 28. We'll get there in just a moment. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 28. Our lesson is going to focus on our king is coming. Our king is coming. And as we begin to explore the fact that our king, the Lord Jesus Christ, is coming, we need to thank God for his unspeakable gift. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 15 for you see, presidents and kings cannot pardon our sins. Only the Lord Jesus Christ can pardon our sins. Romans 5, verses 6 through 11. Silver and gold cannot purchase our redemption. Only Jesus can purchase and has purchased our redemption. Acts chapter 20 and verse 28. It is with the very precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, that our sins have been washed away and our redemption has been purchased and secured. Medicine and science cannot produce our forgiveness. Only the Lord Jesus Christ can produce and make possible the forgiveness of sin. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 7. In Him we have redemption through His blood. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. Thank God for His unspeakable gift. And we know that the unspeakable gift is Jesus Christ Himself. As He died on the old rugged cross with His arms stretched out. Nails piercing each of His hands and driven through his feet, wearing that crown of thorns as he bled and died for the sins of all the world. Jesus has purchased our eternal salvation. He has paid the price for your sins, for my sins, and for the sins of all the world, 1 John chapter 2 and verse number 2. And this morning I want us to understand that not only did Jesus Christ come the first time, to pay the price for our sins. To be our Savior. Not only did He die on an old rugged cross and was buried in a borrowed tomb. Not only was He risen victoriously by the power of the glory of God on that third day. But He ascended back to heaven to the right hand of God the Father. And one day, and one day soon, however long it may be, our King is coming again. You see, while our Lord was yet among men, while He was still on the earth, He promised, I will come again. And through many centuries, they've come and they have gone. This promise, I believe, still echoes through all the ages. And you can almost hear it echoing even now as we spend time in the Word of God, bringing comfort 
to those suffering saints. And I hope and pray even bringing us confidence and hope and relief. Blessed assurance to know that Jesus has promised, I will come again. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 28. You're there in your Bibles, you're probably waiting on me. And I appreciate you being there and diligent in sharing the Word of God with me this morning. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 28 says, So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for Him, He shall appear the second time without sin unto salvation. And that's what we want to focus on this morning. Our King is coming. And He is coming to receive those who are longing for and anticipating and living faithfully for Him. He will receive His own. You know, over 300 times in the New Testament, our Lord makes that promise, I will come again over and over and over again. Again, I will come again. So it's not a matter of if He's going to come again. We know that He is. It's a matter of when. When He comes, will you and I be ready? Yes, our King is coming. And we don't know exactly when He is coming. In fact, not even the Lord Jesus Christ Himself knows. But only God the Father knows when the Lord Jesus Christ is going to be coming again. So, the admonition for us is, yes, our King is coming. The Lord Jesus Christ is coming again. And when that happens does not really matter. The bottom line is, He's coming I must be ready. He's not coming to be crowned and begin His reign as King of kings and Lord of lords. But rather, He is coming to end His reign and to receive His kingdom. To receive His own to Himself and return it to the Father. If you will, turn in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 23 and 24. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 23 and 24. Paul writes, But each one in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, afterward those who are Christ's at his coming, then comes the end. When he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, when he puts an end to all rule and all authority and power. Oh, our King is coming again. And He is coming again to receive His own. And return the kingdom and the power and the authority back to God the Father. But I want us to notice this morning some of the characteristics of His coming. Some of the characteristics of His coming. Number one, it will be absolutely majestic. Absolutely majestic. Majestic. It will be the most glorious and beautiful event you will ever behold. And our human language fails to provide the words to describe the beauty and the majesty of His second coming. In Matthew chapter 25 and verse 31. Jesus said, when the Son of Man shall come in His glory and all the holy angels with Him, then shall He sit upon the throne of His glory. He's coming in glory. He's coming with all the holy angels. What a sight that is going to be. How majestic. How regal and royal that is going to be. To be, it's going to be majestic. It's going to be, be beyond our wildest imagination. Number two, it will be sudden. It will be sudden. 
It will be in the twinkling of an eye. It will be in that moment, in that hour, in that time when we do not expect it. It will be sudden. Matthew chapter 25 and verse 30, 13. Matthew 25 and verse 13. Watch therefore. For ye know not neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man comes. We don't know the time. We can't circle it on our calendar. We can't set our alarm clock to warn us that He is coming. The simple fact is, our King is coming and it's going to happen and take place in an hour, in a day, in a time when we don't expect it. We don't know when He's coming. It will be sudden. Matthew chapter 25, uh, chapter 24 and verse 44. Therefore be ye also ready. For in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man comes. Be ready. It will happen suddenly. So we must always be ready. Knowing that we don't know when He's going to come. But simply knowing that He is coming again ought to motivate us to always be ready. So that it doesn't matter when He does return. In our lifetime or in a million years. It doesn't matter. I am ready. And it's going to happen suddenly. It's going to be majestic. It is going to be sudden. Number three. The third characteristic this morning of our Lord's coming again, His second coming, is going to be that it will be the end of preparation. It will be the end of preparation. That means there will be no more time for getting ready when He comes. The time of getting ready is now. Is now, today. While we have opportunity, while we have life and breath, while we have time, but yet we don't know how much time. So how much urgency ought we to have in making sure that we are ready and that we are staying ready? Why? Because it will be the end of preparation. No more preparations can be made. No more getting ready when He comes. Matthew chapter 25 verse 32 the scripture says, And before him shall be gathered all nations. It's not a time of preparation. Oh, now it's a time for gathering and separating. Before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. There ain't no more time to get ready when he comes. When he comes, there's going to be a gathering and a separating. The time for preparation will be over. Matthew chapter 25, verse number 46, the last verse of this tremendous chapter. Jesus said, These shall go away in everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Again, preparation is over. You're either a sheep or you're a goat. You either go with Him in eternity, or you are departed from Him, separated from Him for all of eternity. There is no more preparation time. The time to prepare is now, today, in this life. When your life is over, when my life is over, my eternal destiny is sealed. It's set. There's no more that I can do. Preparation is over when I die or when the Lord returns. Whichever one happens first, it doesn't matter. The time of preparation will be over. I must be ready. Hebrews 9 verse 27. As it is appointed unto men to die once after this, the judgment. Oh, it's going to be majestic. It's going to be sudden. And it will be the end of preparation. The fourth characteristic. It will be the beginning of supreme joy for some. It will be the beginning of supreme, ultimate, mind-blowing joy for some. Matthew chapter 25 and verse 34. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father. 
Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Oh, the joy. The joy of hearing God say, Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into, come into not only the presence, but in, come into the very kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. The supreme, ultimate joy of a faithful life lived. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into, come, as Jesus said, come, you blessed of my Father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. It will be the beginning of supreme joy for some. Joy that will never end in the very presence of God and all the holy angels and all the faithful of all the ages past. It will be the beginning of supreme, ultimate joy for some. But then here's the final characteristic this morning of our King's second coming. It will be majestic. It will be sudden. It will be the end of preparation. And it will be the beginning of supreme joy for some. But number five, Number five, it will be the beginning of great sorrow for others. Oh, it will be a time for supreme joy for a few, for some. But it will be a beginning of great sorrow for the majority, for others. Jesus said in Matthew 25 and verse 41, Then shall he also say, to them on the left hand. Depart from me. Ye cursed. In everlasting fire. Prepared for the devil and his angels. Oh the ultimate joy is come. To those on the right hand. Come ye blessed of my father. But it will be a beginning of great sorrow. For others on the left. To whom the Master says, to whom the Father says, depart from me. Depart from me, you cursed, in the everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. What will it be for you? Will it be a time, a beginning of supreme joy? Come, inherit. Or will it be a time of great sorrow? Depart from me, ye cursed, in the everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Oh, my friend, these characteristics are just but a few. But let us remember that our Lord is coming again. Our King is coming again. And His coming will be majestic. It will be sudden. It will be the end of all preparation. It will be the beginning of supreme joy for some, but it will also be the beginning of great sorrow for others. The real question this morning is, not, is He coming? Oh, He is coming. It's not, when is He coming? It is, rather, the question this morning, will you be ready when He comes? Will you be ready when He comes? If you are faithful and you are ready, whether you're dead or you're alive, you will hear, well done, good and faithful servant. You will hear, come, you blessed of my Father. But it might be a time of great sorrow for others who are unfaithful, who are unprepared, who have been disobedient and neglected to obey the gospel and live faithfully for Him. It will be a great Sorrow for others who will hear, depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. So the question again this morning is, will you be ready? He's coming. He's coming. Will you be ready? Maybe this morning 
you find yourself unprepared. You have life and breath and opportunity this morning. Whatever it is that you need to do, Satan will tell you, don't do it. Put it off. You have more time. Go about your own life. Live however you want to live. But Jesus has said, I will come again. We don't know when He will come. We don't know the, the day or the hour in which our life will be over. Eternity is at stake. Heaven is too majestic and beautiful to miss and hell is too hot and too horrible to go. Will you be ready? This morning, whatever you need to do to make sure that you are ready, that you are prepared for heaven, that you can avoid the great sorrow of separation into an eternal hell, make those choices Make those changes this morning. Don't let Satan hinder you. Don't let Satan tell you lies. That you have more time. That you can do it next week or next month. Or you don't have to do anything at all. Are you ready today? Are you ready this morning? If you're not. If you need to obey the gospel and be baptized, why not this morning, right now? Maybe it is though you have obeyed the gospel in time past, but you haven't been living a prepared life. You haven't been making preparations. You're not ready for that great judgment day. You're not ready to step from earthly life into eternity through the doorway of death. You're not prepared. What will it be for you? great joy or a time of great sorrow. You can make that choice this morning right now. What do you want it to be? Are you ready? If you're not, we sing a song to encourage you this morning. Whatever your need may be, all we simply ask is that you come and let us know how we can help you as together we stand and as we sing. has a good afternoon. I tell you, these days have been very nice. Uh, reminding you that we will have a worship service uh, Wednesday night, midweek Bible study here. We're still in one big group right now. Uh, hopefully, the first Sunday in Decem uh, December, we'll be able to start back with our classes. We're just kind of waiting to see how that goes, but we're planning to start the quarter then. Let's close with a word of prayer. 
Our God and our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this day and for all the love that you share with us. And Father, we are thankful to know that uh, Jesus is coming again. And we pray, Father, that each one of us would be prepared for that coming. Uh, we know, Father, that you tell us that you will come like a thief in the night. And as we heard today, uh, it will be sudden. And we pray, Father, that as your children, we would always be ready for when you come again. Father, we pray today that you'd be with Trey and Vicki and that you'd give them traveling graces as, as they will be heading back home very soon. We pray, Father, that you would be with Mark and Amy and Faith as they too will be heading back to their homes. Give them traveling graces on their journey. Father, we thank you for Jesus. We pray you forgive us of our sins. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen.